Hi hey everyone, RetroStage here. I wanted to go over the software for the Retro Blaster Programmer 2.0 and show how it interfaces with the two different hardware revisions. The first hardware revision would be the old style for anybody that had bought the Retro Blaster Programmer and N64 Blasters before. Your color would be different than this one, but it's the same model. Um, and then that would be the hardware revision for that one. And then the new hardware revision for the version 2.0. And this is the one with the cartridge adapter slot so that you can pop it out and put in a different adapter and write uh, a game to a different console type. So right now only N64 is available, but I've got in the works uh, different cartridge adapters. So I've got one here for Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. And I've also got one for uh, Sega Genesis. And I'm working on one for the original Nintendo as well here coming up. And then, of course, Super Nintendo and stuff down the road here too. So showing how it interfaces with the software. So we're going to start with the old hardware revision. We're just going to click on version up here. And this is going to tell us what the firmware version is as well as the hardware revision. So you can see this one here says first gen. This is for the original Retro Blaster programmer hardware. Um, but the version here, 2.0b, of course, with any firmware update, that will change. So click out of that. If we wanted to upgrade the firmware, I've added the ability to do it in here versus having to go through an external program. So right now, um, what you would do on the old program, uh, old programmer hardware, there's a little jumper there that says RST. You just have to jump that together with uh, just a piece of metal, like a screw or something like that will work, anything that's conductive, and that'll put it into what's called DFU mode, which is uh, for firmware upgrades. Once it's in that mode, you can click on upgrade firmware. It's gonna go, are you sure? You can click yes, pick the firmware file, and then after that, it will write uh, and upgrade the uh, the software, or sorry, the firmware to the newer version. Um, for the new hardware revision, there's a little boot button here. So you just have to click that button. It'll go into DFU mode and then you can upgrade from there. So it just makes it so that any future versions that come out, it's going to be a lot easier to uh, add the ability to do different cartridges and stuff down the road. So, uh, so first off, we want to try dumping. Let's try dumping the game that's currently on this Retro Blaster. So I'm going to go and select Retro Blaster Old. Any other N64 board, so if you're using the N64 uh, Blaster 2.0 or any original cartridge, you would just select Nintendo 64 for the cartridge type. But here, we're going to go Blaster Old, and we're going to dump the ROM from it. So I just made a folder here called Dumps, and this game I think is Dr. Mario, so let's try that. Dr. Mario 64, we're going to dump it. And it's asking how big the game is. So if you don't know, you just enter the full size of the blaster board. So if I didn't know, I would say this one's 32 megabytes. But I know Dr. Mario is only 4 megabytes, so I'm going to enter 4. So it's going to start dumping. From here, I'll just pull up on my folder here. So it'll show up in here in about, about 50 seconds or so. Um, but it's going to uh, dump the contents of the ROM throw it into a file, and then we'll be able to open it with the hex editor just to make sure that the file looks proper. Um, while it's dumping, a little LED will indicate on there that it's doing something. On the uh, original Retro Blaster Programmer hardware, the LED generally will just stay solid, um, whereas on the new hardware revision, the LED will blink um, according to what you're doing. It's just on the original programmer hardware, the uh, LED was tied to one of the data pins, so it only does what the data pin's doing. So, um, here we go. Just finished. 52 seconds. So, let's open that up. Pull it over here, and we can see, oh, Dr. Mario 64. So, dump the contents of the ROM, and if you wanted to, you could always verify it against the original, but I know it's good, so it dumped. Good. So that one finished. Now if I wanted to write a different game to it, go up here to the write section, I'm going to select N64 Blaster Old, and we're going to write a file. So in this case here, let's just write, um, well, let's write the same game right back to it. So it's going to erase the cartridge first, and this is all done automatically, and you can see that lights blinking, or uh, solid there. Um, the old software, you had to individually 
select the COM port that it was running on. You had to, you know, do your erase and then you had to do your write. I've integrated all of that so it's as seamless as possible and as streamlined as possible so that it's just, you can push, write your ROM, go grab a beer and come back and then the game is done. Um, so it takes, depending on the game size, um, I think it writes at about, about 100 kilobytes per second for N64, um, give or take. So it's uh, usually not too bad. It's definitely a lot faster than the old hardware, um, sorry, the old software ran at. So um, should be done here pretty quick. There we go. So 51 seconds to write it back to the game. And, uh, and so then our write is finished. So now if we're going to do all this with the... Um, same hardware revision, but we, but we want to run it. Uh, want to run the 2.0 blaster. I have these little adapters. These aren't available yet, but they will be shortly. I just have to actually get them built and assembled. But um, so I'm just going to pop this adapter here into the old hardware revision. This will now enable me to write the to the new N64 blasters 2.0. So I just have to pop it in. I'm going to just do this off camera, but then I'll show you. So. So that's how it looks there. It looks like a little bit of a Frankenstein, but this enables the ability for anybody that bought the old hardware revision so that they're not kind of hooped out of being able to use these and they don't have to buy the new firm or the uh, new Retro Blaster programmer if they don't want to. So, um, but so then this way here, we can now interface directly with the new blaster. So if, uh, if I want to write to it, let's go, actually let's do, yeah, we'll write to it. We'll just write a file to it. So let's go, we're going to write to the 2.0 and I'm going to write the same thing. Let's write Dr. Mario. So click on that. Same thing, it's going to start erasing and uh, and then it's going to go through all the steps. So I'm just going to pause it for a sec while it does that and then we'll come back. Okay, write finished here and it's at 52.75 seconds. So about the same as it was on the last one. So let's just pop our cartridge out. And I'm just going to turn the camera over here to the screen. So, again, Retro Blaster. This is uh, currently already set to the right format for Dr. Mario, but in case it wasn't here, I just have to read the legend on the front. So, let's see if I can get this thing to focus. Come on. There we go. So, currently, if all dip switches are down, it is the 6102 CIC type with a 4K EEPROM type. So if we were using a game like Conker's Bad Fur Day or something, then we would have this set to 6105, which would be this pin here up, and then the uh, fourth pin up as well, and that enables 16K EEPROM mode, but we don't need that for Dr. Mario. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the, or in the console, fire it up, and here is our Dr. Mario. So again, super, super straightforward uh, to set it all up. The uh, on the website, once this this new N64 Blaster launches, I'm going to allow different hardware variations to be selected by the customer. So rather than being forced to have SRAM and EEPROM and a battery. If you didn't need any of that and you just wanted to make a game that didn't have any saveability, rather than paying for the full cost of something you're not going to use, I've now added different variations so that you can take out features that you don't need. Versus the original blaster you kind of got as it came. So um, I'm just doing this so that, again, people can have a little bit more variety and a bit more customization uh, options than they could before. So. The, uh, again, battery, if you're selecting SRAM, battery will always be included. And there's, um, similar to the old model, this does NTSC and PAL regions. To select PAL, there is a little step you got to do here on the back. Again, I'll see if I can focus this thing. It says cut here for PAL. Basically, there's a little jumper here. This board is enabled for NTSC regions by default, but if you have a PAL region, just a small exacto knife, you make a little cut right where that arrow is, and that now enables this for PAL mode. So, and if you ever want to go back to NTSC, you just have to bridge this jumper back here, and now you're back to NTSC mode. So I just did that kind of as a cost savings measure, but um, really the majority uh, 
of people that are going to be using this for a PAL region, they're not going to have to switch back and forth in a PAL console. So just you make that cut and then you're kind of good to go. So anyways, keep dropping it. Um, so that's kind of the majority of the features here. 64 megabytes capacity on this. Um, again, for customization, I'm, I'm allowing that to be dropped down to 32 megabytes if you don't need the full 64 megabyte capacity. Uh, again, cost saving measures there uh, for the customer. Um, aside from that, this hardware is done. The uh, programmer hardware is done and the software is as done as it will be for now. The software still has, um, of course, some room for growth. We're gonna add different cartridge models that you can write to once I come up with the other blasters for the different consoles. Again, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Those blasters are mostly done. I have to do some tweaks on the design and uh, the Sega Genesis blaster, again, mostly done. I also just have to tweak that. As for the dumping, Right now, Nintendo 64 is the only one that you can dump. But once I have, um, like the firmware is already available for these different consoles. I just have to kind of finish them. Um, NES is the one I'm working on currently. So I'm kind of hoping to get my N my NES blasters kind of going here soon. But it's, it's a work in progress. Most of it is just finding the time to do it. But I wanted to make sure first and foremost that the N64 aspect of this was done and ready to go so that I could start releasing the new N64 Blaster 2.0 hardware. Um, so that's it for right now. If there's any questions, always feel free to uh, contact me on Twitter or through uh, email. And um, otherwise, again, as of tomorrow at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, the hardware for the N64 Blaster 2.0 and the Retro Blaster Programmer 2.0 are going to be available for pre-order. So um, thanks for watching. That's all for now.